If you're wiring an amplifier or setting up an amplifier to bi amp a three way component system like this with a separate woofer, a mid range, and a tweeter, uh, and you don't know how to set up the crossovers on that amplifier to, to properly configure that three way uh, component system, this video might be helpful for you. Hey everyone, I'm Cameron with Car Audio Now. Today I'm going to do a quick demonstration on how to configure the crossovers on this Sony amplifier uh, for an install on a Ford F-150 actually. This truck has a three-way system uh, in the front complete with a six and a half inch woofer, the three and a half inch mid-range that are in the dash, and then a one inch tweeter that are in the A pillars of the front. Um, and then it also has six and a half inch coaxials in the rear. But what I'm gonna do is buy amp the, the fronts, that three-way component si system, so that I can separate the mids and the tweeters uh, from the woofers and uh, ultimately the gains and the levels for, for those two separately as well. And the reason I'm gonna do this is because Problem is that the two added three and a half inch mid-range speakers that are now positioned in the center dash are just too overbearing. The combination of those uh, tweeters and those three and a half inch mid-ranges, it's just too overbearing. So I decided to buy amp these and the, the crossovers that come with that, those speakers allow for that. So check and make sure if that your crossovers will allow for that. Um, and it'll allow me to dedicate a channel <clears throat> along with the gains and levels for just the tweeters and the mids, and then also separately another channel for the six and a half inch mid bass or the, the, the woofer. And that'll allow me to pull back that overbearing mid range in this system and get it to sound a little bit more leveled out. Now, some of you might be asking, Cameron, can't you do this with an inline DSP too? And the answer is yes, you can use a DSP. You don't have to do it directly on the amplifier like I am, as long as the DSP that you have in the system is, has enough channel outputs to provide signal for the front mids and tweeters, the front um, uh, six and a half inch woofers, and then whatever else you have in there, in my case, the, the a channel for the rears. But uh, the number two you know, caveat there is that your system has to be wired with all of those respective RCAs. So if you're doing this from the ground up, maybe you do that. But in this particular truck, the DSP that I used can actually support it. It has the necessary outputs so that I can go and configure the crossovers and these frequency ranges directly in it, but it's only wired for a four channel setup. So I don't have the extra RCAs to provide a dedicated signal signal and break out these mids and tweeters on the DSP uh, that I'm gonna be separating out on the amplifier. Now the amplifier that I'm gonna be doing this on today is the Sony XM8ES. This is an eight channel amplifier. You might notice that by seeing one, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, right? But I'm only actually going to be using six of them for this setup. So you can basically dis discard this one. I might use these in the future if I decide to further break out those mids and tweeters and remove that active uh, passover network and just power them to all of every individual component from this amplifier. But today I'm only going to be using six and, and those mids and the tweeters are going to be combined. And I'm going to be using in terms of inputs. I'm using a front and rear setup. It's four RCA channels. So uh, uh, front, uh, front left and right, uh, and rear left and right. The front left and right will be driving the signal for the tweeters, mids, uh, and then the woofers are also going to be driven by that front setup. And then the rear, in the the rear inputs are going to drive the rears. I told you that this per, this particular truck originally had a four channel setup, so that's why there's only front and rears. Now, channel one and two, the way that I'm going to be setting this up, channel one and two will be for the front six and a half inch woofer, so you can see left and right, or yeah, left and right. Channels three and four will be the combined output for that mid-range and tweeters. That's what's, this is the bi-amp setup. And then this channel five and six will be for the rear six and a half coaxials that are in the rear door panels. Um, each will only need one channel. Now, the first thing that I'm gonna do before I start to mess around with the control panel on this amplifier, and I'll get to that in a moment, is do a little bit of research 
and check up on the frequency responses that my setup can handle those three uh, the three-way component and the rear uh, coaxials along with uh, um you know there, there's also a subwoofer in the system that's gonna be powered by another one another amplifier but that way i know the the frequency ranges for those speakers what those those speakers can handle so here's a look at the frequency ranges that i'm going to start to bake into the crossovers of this amplifier and by doing this research up front writing it down then i can come back and just do it directly on the amplifier uh, with ease i have it all noted down so on this chart you can see for the three-way system that i'm biamping the frequency range is between 40 hertz and 40,000 hertz uh, uh, or 40 k hertz I'm going to be setting the six and a half woofers, the, the mid bass, to a range between 90 hertz and 500. That, if you recall, that's going to be on the first channel of my system. And this is, this is going to be the mid bass of this system. And it's worth noting that I have a 12 inch subwoofer that's going to be set with a maximum frequency, um, or in other terms, the low pass is going to be set to 110 hertz. So there's going to be a little bit of overlap between the two, between the 90 hertz minimum on these speakers and the 110 uh, maximum of that subwoofer. This is also the only channel that I'm going to have a specified top and bottom frequency cap, and I'm going to use what's called the band pass. It's uh, indicated by BP on the amplifier uh, in order to set up. For the three and a half inch mid-range speakers and the tweeters, which again, if you recall, I mentioned those are combined into one channel on, I'm still using the crossover. Those will be get joined through the crossover and I'm gonna set that particular channel to, or those two channels to a high pass configuration or in other terms, I'm gonna set the minimum frequency to be 400, what you can see on this chart. Now, this will prevent anything from under that 400 hertz from being passed to these mids. You don't wanna pass 110 hertz to these three and a half inch speakers or one inch tweeters. Now the, the crossover networks would probably prevent that, but I'm, I'm gonna do it here as well. And notice there's also a little bit of overlap between that 400 max and 500 configuration, the 500 max on the mid base, the six and a half that I just mentioned, and these are gonna go all the way down to 400. So there's gonna be about a hundred, to give or take a hundred Hertz of overlap. And I'm being a little bit of ge like generous there because these crossover uh, networks on, on the amplifier aren't precise. So that's why, why, mainly why I'm doing that, but, but it's good to have a little bit of over, overlap initially, and then I can go back and tune those out uh, at a later time. But at the, finally, for those rear six and a half inch coaxials that I mentioned, I'm gonna be putting on channels uh, five and, and six on the amplifier. Those have a rated frequency range between 45 Hertz and 40,000 uh, Hertz. Now, this particular coaxial setup has a smaller, cone surface area than those fronts. And it's because the tweeter in this coaxial setup is actually built into the center of that, the, the woofer, the, the main driver. So it has a smaller surface area because of that. That's probably why you see the 45 Hertz instead of 40, but in general, the, you know, by default, this speaker isn't gonna handle the bass and mid bass as well as the fronts um, that, that have those separate tweeters and the separate mid-range three and a half inch speaker, uh, speakers. So I'm gonna shoot between a 95, I'm gonna bump that up to 95 and 100 hertz for these rears. And I also know that the subwoofer is in the rear with a maximum of 110. So there's still some overlap there. So now that I have a plan on what to do here, I'm gonna show you how to set this up on the amp itself and to do that, Typically, you're going to even have to remove a panel. In this case, this panel, I'm going to remove this panel uh, to access the control panel, or it's going to be on the side. It might be, you know, this side is obviously for the outputs and inputs. It might be on the opposite side of your amplifier. On this one, it's on the face. So I'm going to go ahead and, and remove the plate here and show you what's underneath. All right, so now I've tried to zoom in here without ruining the image quality. You can see all the various controls here on this panel. And what I'm focused on specifically is the crossovers, which you're gonna find for each of the channels, amplifiers, channel outputs, they, they group them in twos. And in this case, there's eight channels. So there's four different configurations. One, two, three, four. I taped this one out because I'm not using that. 
And so the first one that I'm going to do, I mentioned the channels one and two. I'm going to reference back to my plan that I mentioned earlier and pull up in my, my Excel or table. So the first one I'm going to do is channel one and two. That was for my six and a half inch uh, woofers. I, I mentioned that I was going to be using a 90 to 50, or excuse me, 90 to 500 hertz range. Um, now that is what that has to leverage what's called a, uh, a band pass. And all that means is that band pass, you have, you have high pass, which allows you to pass anything higher than um, whatever you determine. Low pass is pass anything lower than what the threshold is, what you, uh, the, what you set on the amplifier. And then band passes, you can set the minimums and the, the highs. So band pass, I mentioned this is the only one that I'm going to use a band pass because I'm using, I'm going to be going between that 90 and 500 Hertz settings. So I'm going to select the band pass. I'm going to make sure that the range that I'm setting is, um, is f on this particular amp amplifier. You can set the ranges to two configurations. Range one is 50 to 500 Hertz or uh, the range two selection, and not every amplifier has this, it might be joined. The range two selection is 500 to 5,000. So um, like I mentioned, it's gonna, be, it's gonna be 90 to 500. So I'm gonna select that for the filter. And then I'm gonna go ahead and start setting the high pass and low pass for this particular <clears throat> uh, channel. And the high pass is what I'm gonna set first. The high pass again is gonna be the minimum. And good little tool, a guitar pick, fits perfectly into these better than than probably a flathead and you know i keep this in in my vehicle too whenever i want uh to do some tuning but i'm going to go ahead and set the high pass to about 90 just judging based on the 50 to 150 here somewhere uh in the middle a little bit lower than the middle um and then so now this high pass is set to around 90 roughly and now I'm going to set the low pass, which is going to set basically the upper threshold, which is 500. So I'm going to go ahead and push this all the way to the 500 max. And that's what's going to bring this channel. It's going to limit the outputs of this channel between 90 and 500 Hertz. Now let's talk about channels three and four. I, I talked, uh, I mentioned that these are what's going to drive those front tweeters, the separate tweeters and mids. Basically all I'm going to do for this is set a minimum of 400. I set the maximum of 500 for that, uh, that woofer. Now there's going to be a little bit of overlap and I'm doing that because these aren't precise. These aren't exact and uh, it gives me a little bit of wiggle room, but somewhere around there, you don't have to have an overlap. I do a little bit of an overlap. I'm going to check the high pass, which is going to set the minimum. And when you select the high pass, the low pass, option on this is, is useless. It doesn't actually, it's not engaged. So I said, I'm going to use 400. So I'm going to go ahead and twist the low pass all the way to what is about 400 here. Now this is set to 400. This isn't going to be used. Now this channel is set to pass. Now this three, these, this three and four, which is going to be those mids and tweeters is set to have a minimum of 400 uh, and above Hertz. That's the frequencies that will be passed in this channel for those mids and tweeters. And then in that crossover network that I have, it will split the two. It'll split the tweeters and the mid range. And then I'll be able to set this, these gains at a little later time when I get it in, back into the truck. And finally, the, those rear coaxials, uh, back to my guide, I, I, I chose to do uh, 90 or not, like between 95 and 100 hertz. So what I'm gonna do, that's the minimum, 95 to 100 hertz is the minimum. So again, I need to do band, high pass. I'm not looking to limit the upper threshold of those speakers, it doesn't need to be. So I'm gonna use the high pass and then I'm gonna set this particular high pass to a little higher than I did on the channel one and two. And I'm gonna put it between, let's say 95 and 100. And low pass isn't going to be used for this either. So this channel is now set up for those coaxials in the rears. 
So that's pretty much it. The crossovers for each of the channels that I'm gonna use are all set for this biamping setup in the front and the coaxials that I'm using in the rear. Now, another option that you might use an eight channel for is if you did get a three-way setup in the rear too, you could leverage and biamp with the set, this, this other champ. So you could use channels one and two, three and four for the fronts to power the biamp setup and then five, six, seven, and eight to, to biamp the rears. You, you know, you have several options with this eight channel in particular in this case I only needed six so the next thing I'm gonna do and uh, what I'm not gonna cover but is go put this back in and, and uh, start to tune up the gains for each of these channels I'm gonna hook it up to my RTA and and uh, make sure that the frequencies aren't overbearing for those mid ranges anymore and that that uh, that audio curve the the sound curve is uh, what I, I like to see and like to hear in my vehicle so that's all I had for you. Thanks for watching. Again, this is just one way to buy amp your system. You can do it through DSPs. You can do it through your amplifiers. There's a couple different ways. I hope this was useful for all of you who are looking to, to do something similar and buy amp a, a three-way component system in, in your car or truck. Thanks again for watching.